All right, guys, joining me at this time is yet another competitor in the combat sports coverage grappling only competition coming up here next week. Josh Alam, Un, though, unlike everybody else, Josh is the main event this week, man. Mm-hmm. I can't wait to see you facing a UFC legend in Melvin Gallard. How excited are you to be sharing the mat with him? Dude, it's whenever they whenever they offered it to me, it was just it I didn't it didn't take me two seconds to to tell him yes, you know. Uh this it's just somebody being so young and being able to go against Melvin, you know, and, and what's yeah. crazy about it is whenever I posted about it and started telling people, unless you're a MMA OG or like, you know, actual fan, a lot of people didn't know who he was and I was like, Oh, y'all are and y'all are y'all and, and you know, the fight <laughs> game's the hottest thing right now. So it's yes. like, dude, y'all don't know who Melvin Gallard is? Like Listen, we've but. been stuck at our houses for a long time. If you guys haven't jumped into MMA history yet, shame on you. Yes, yeah, seriously, because that—that's, dude. I, I'm I'm going against the guy, and I got, I can tell you a hundred percent that that's somebody. You know, that's an OG. That's one of the pioneers of the game. You know, especially for the lighter weight divisions. You know, because he was. If you go back, he's definitely easily one of the more exciting fighters that there was. Period. In his time, you know. He was yeah, getting some at one nasty point, knockouts. He held the most knockouts in the lightweight division. He actually broke BJ Penn's record. I'm looking at it right now. Uh, when he did that, and then uh, he went on a crazy tear. Then he lost twice. He yeah. lost twice to submission. Joe, look, naked Joe. choke. Yeah. Uh, is that something that you're looking to maybe sink your hooks into? Get that back. Uh, man, to be honest with you, bro, my my game is so so good and so like so well like versed you know what i mean like I, i'm good with the chokes the arm bars the locks the the legs uh I, i'm, I'm really, when i go in there i'm really just gonna take what i get you know what i mean yeah. I, I don't i don't know if i want to because you know it's a tournament i, I really don't know if i want to try to make it really quick or if i want to like really go in there and wrestle him, you know, because I, I know I could go in there and just jump to my butt with Melvin and, you know, probably just, you know, try to lock up a leg lock or something. Mm-hmm. You, you know the jiu-jitsu game. Yeah. Uh, but I kind of want to go in there and wrestle with him and give him a give him a fair go. You know, I don't want to go in there and just sit sit on my butt and just, you know, start doing all that. You know, I'm not I'm not there for that, you know. So. Minari rules and shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and those are cool. Don't get me wrong. Those are cool. And, those, and they and they work. And they work. You know, Ron Hall in the UFC right now, He's he's got a couple of people. He got BJ. With yeah, it. a lot of uh, people are feared to actually go up against him just because it's such a – he's so good at it. He's a yeah. master at it. Yeah. It's almost like, you know, don't be afraid of the guy with a thousand kicks. Be afraid of the guy with the one yeah. kick who's practiced a thousand times. Yeah. I mean, but one thing about when, – when it comes to that is people – I think people are given – Respect needs to be given when someone's that you know that mm-hmm. skilled with with stuff like that, but you can't give them too much respect. No, you give them too 100%. much respect, that's that's when they that's when they're able to get that type of stuff. You know, I, yeah. my first super fight last year, right when I came out, the guy went for an Minari roll on me literally <laughs> within three seconds. You know, and I was like, oh, you know, but I but I didn't I didn't panic. You know what I mean? I didn't you know. Uh, We're not break dancing right now, damn it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I'm I'm uh I'm just gonna go in there and really just take what I get, you know, just just go in there and fill it out, you know. No, one hundred percent. Obviously, the goal is to get through the tournament, win the bracket. I believe your bracket's a thousand dollars, is it not? Yeah. There we go, man. Try to get that money. Yeah. Super excited for that, yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> Trust me, that's yeah. I, honestly, honestly, bro, for me, I'm such a like down the down the in the heart like fighter fight fan whatever you want to call it dude like i'm re- honestly more excited to grapple with melvin than the thousand but you know i'm still i'm still broke so the thousand is going to be great you know what i mean but uh welcome but, to america 2020 yeah <laughs> yeah the thousand is going to be great but dude honestly uh grappling melvin is uh, is just worth the experience for me well, you know like i say it's a cherry on the top yeah literally yeah li- it's literally the cherry because somebody i'm telling you man gra- grappling melvin for me you know, and, and this is just speaking for me. It's just a big opportunity personally, just because, and I'm not getting huge money or, you know, nothing crazy like that. It's just, it's just, this is somebody I literally used to watch and study as a kid. And now I'm, I'm grown and, and, and I'm going against it. So it's just, it's cool, man. I, I'm, I'm just, I've been waiting for days like this, you know, stuff, stuff like this, you know, 100%. Hopefully you guys uh, have a good match. Maybe get a beer after. 
Oh yeah, well I don't drink, but I, I would definitely get one with Melvin for sure. <laughs> there you go. I don't yeah. drink either, but I like. I've had people offer me like uh, I was at a, an event once, and uh, the Black Beast offered me a beer once, and I was like, "Oh, you got well, to." Well, I mean, shit, I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't to. really drink, but I mean, I'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He was like, "Want one of these beers?" I was like, "Sure." <laughs> yeah, me and uh, me and Derek, we've uh, we you, you know we don't like train together because he's way too mm -hmm. big, but uh, big we've trained. Yeah, we've trained in the same uh, gym a few times. He's a cool dude, man. He's he's cool as hell. That's one of the yeah, most regular dudes. Have you been out in Texas dudes. your whole life? Yes, sir. I've uh, I've been here in Texas City my whole life. Born and raised Texas boy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Playing high school football? I played in middle school, and it was funny. Uh, so I started in seventh grade, and it was like I got a couple games under my belt, and then – I had just gotten into jujitsu and I had a tournament uh -huh. in San Antonio on Saturday, but the games were on Friday. So I had to leave Friday, you know, to be weighed in for the tournament. Mm -hmm. So I told my coach, I was like, Hey, you know, I got, I got this going on. I'm probably not gonna be able to make the game, you know? And I remember my coach gave me a, literally gave me an ultimatum right then and there. He was like, Hey, he was like, and, and at the time, and the football was my dream. I've always been kind of like an athlete, you know, I always knew I yeah. kind of wanted to do something physically, you know? Uh, and football was my thing. I used to play street football every single day when I was younger. And uh, uh, right when I got into jujitsu, bro, because I, I used to fight a lot. And, and right when I got into jujitsu, it just changed. And, and my coach was like, hey, you're either playing in the game tomorrow or you're going to do your your, your thing. You know, and I was like, well, I'm out. I, yeah, <laughs> took, took, dude, literally took my helmet off and gave it to him right there. And I never went back to football. And I've been doing this since literally. It's legit, like, once you step on those mats and you realize you're supposed to be there, it's it's one of those things where it's so hard to get off of them. Yeah, yeah. You have two wins by submission, uh, triangle choke, arm bar. Obviously, you said that you're very well-rounded. What's your favorite choke, though? Probably the triangle choke. Probably yeah. the triangle. Uh, yeah, it's nasty. If you go on my amateur uh, record, Mm -hmm. I have I got probably one of the nastiest triangle finishes that you're gonna see. Uh, it was it was uh, versus Timothy Messer. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's if you go watch that it, that one, it went viral on uh, World's Craziest Fights Facebook yeah. page. They got like 10 million uh, likes. Uh, it got like 250 thousand views. Holy uh, shit! Yeah, it uh, uh, it, it's it's a nasty little sub, man. It, it, it's a nasty little sub. If you ever get to I'm see, I'm definitely it. gonna have to check that out now. Yeah, yeah, it's on YouTube too. You just search me up. Where do you train out of? I'm training out. Well, so it's crazy now. Uh, I, we had a gym. So me and my head coach Joel Rivera, uh, me and him kind of brought up our own gym. Um, mm -hmm. we we kind of just got it going for ourselves, you know, early and uh. So it, it was Texas Striking Academy. We just closed the focus on this year, you know, fighting and everything. Because, bro, we got so busy with uh, – or really he did. He got so busy with training new clients and, and new people and stuff that um, once our lease came to an end, we were like, man, it, it's probably best if we just take a year, you know, and, and really focus on this because, you know, the money's going to come, you know, if you're winning. Yeah, 100%. And you're, and you, you know, so and, – and he already knows my loyalty, you know, and I already plan on – you know, making sure the team's good and everything. It's just we really need to focus and, and, and get everything right, get me healthy, get get the get the skills where they need to be, you know, and because uh, I'm I'm always gonna be real with myself and I do hundred percent believe that I'm 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 ready for that that upper echelon uh opponents. You know what I mean? The the high level twenty one ranked professional featherweight in the state of texas that's not something to gawk at like texas is a big state there's a lot of great featherweights there yeah i mean you're definitely on your way but and i'm and i'm t and i'm telling you man i'm not i'm not into the uh the whole talking talking shit game like and, and doing all that you know and, and i am gonna do it i'm young and you know I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm excited myself you know but uh i truly I don't think there's any. You're doing it because that's who you are, though. Yeah, and I don't think there's any featherweight. I'm telling you, bro. I, I you can ask anybody I train with here, here, here down here. Like I'm telling you, my fights have no, have zero. Um, no, let me not say zero, but they, it, it, it's not what, what you're gonna see. You know what I mean? C coming, coming soon. Because I've just 
and, and I'll make excuses. I don't make excuses. I try not to complain about things. You know, I've mm-hmm. just had some stuff going on, but uh, I'm on the I'm on the back end of that. You know what I mean? I can get get all my stuff going, and and people well, that's all gonna, that matters, right? Being on the back end. Yeah. Getting it behind you and then just focusing on what's in the future. Yeah, pushing forward. You're a big MMA fan. Obviously, you follow. Uh, we talked about men. How do you feel about uh, Conor McGregor here returning here soon? Oh man, I'm I'm excited for. I mean, who isn't though? You know, Conor's right. just a, uh, Conor's a you know, I, dude. Conor's one of them guys. It irritates me sometimes when he doesn't get his respect because mm-hmm. you know you know everyone loves to talk about him now. You know, like 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 talk trash about him. And I can see both sides because he's done things that he deserves to be talked about. One hundred percent. You know, and he's done and he's done things athletically that he deserves to be respected about, you know, and I'm just one of them people. I, I guess sometimes I overlook the bad stuff, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm, I'm I'm just looking at it as an accomplishment. I'm looking at him as an athlete. You know, I don't, I'm not really, you know, caring about what he's doing outside. But, man, he's 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 nasty, bro. He's nasty. And he he definitely needs that respect that that he deserves of changing the game, you know, because he's you know, everything's changed since he came in. You know, oh, I still 100%. remember I still remember the UFC right before he came in. You know, I, I followed him. I saw him, his last Cage Warriors fight right before. Because I've all, you know, bro, 14, 15, I was just a hardcore <laughs> everyday YouTube and fights and stuff. Uh, oh, man, all day, bro, all day. So that's just all I've, you know, that's all I know, really. Who do you got to win in that Poirier versus Conor fight? I think Poirier is, uh, I think Poirier, I think it's going to be an actual, you know, I think it's going to be an actual fight this time. You know, it was kind of, it was kind of a, a quick little exchange and then Poirier was out last time. I, I think it's going to go a good two or three rounds this time. Uh, I'd, I'd have to pick Connor. I just think, I think he can land that shot. I think he is going to land yeah. that shot. Um, but, you know, Dustin's a lot better now, man. So I, I really couldn't tell you, man. I really couldn't tell you. And he's much bigger too. Uh, like I, I talked about this earlier, he really looks more like a welterweight than a lightweight now. And before, yeah. he really looked like he was a featherweight. Yeah. Uh, the one thing I hate about the Connor haters, I guess, is every time he like cleans someone's clock, like when he beat Eddie, they're always like, "Oh, the other dude took a dive." Nobody is stepping in the cage to take a dive. I guarantee you that. At least not in the UFC. Yeah. Yeah. No. That's just that's just people want, wanting to be, you know or. Oh, can't believe you know what i mean they can't right. believe that what he's doing you know because he goes in there does some unbelievable shit you know i mean he's he's had me multiple i remember when he knocked out aldo i was jumping all over my house you know oh my uh, that left hand oh. he stepped outside let aldo over extend himself put it right on the butt man it was beautiful and it, and it was just flawless per- yeah it, yeah it was just the perfect scenario you know he had the biggest most scariest threat in the game because dude you remember how you remember how scary aldo was Going into that fight, I thought it was going to be a five-round war. I thought it would have been the best featherweight title fight we've ever seen in our entire lives. On the other hand, it was probably the most dirtiest knockout we've ever seen. Yeah, and and you know what's crazy is because you know you, you know uh, Aldo pulled out the first one and Mendez stepped. Yeah, in. I firmly believe, firmly, because I've watched both fights way too many times. Conor would have lost that first fight with Aldo. I guarantee it. He would have lost that first fight. If you go look I at think Connor, had you gave Mendez a full camp, he probably would have beat Connor that day. He probably, yeah, he probably would have because he would have had. I think he wouldn't. He, had he a wouldn't have gas. gas tank. Yeah, yeah, he'd have had a better gas tank. Uh, we won't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> but I really, I really think Aldo would have won that first one because if, if you go and look at Connor's camp in that one, I think he had an ACL tear or his MCL yeah. had a tear. He had all types of. Uh, issues and he had a terrible cut in that fight a terrible cut he he looked that was the worst he ever looked in a weight cut was the Mendez fight if you go look back at it and uh and and you go look at him in the Mendez fight and him in the Aldo fight you can tell in the Aldo fight he was healthy yeah, he was firing he was, on all cylinders yeah the knee Aldo, wasn't bothering him at all yeah Aldo should have he should have took <clears throat> that first one because they he, he he wouldn't even have to go through that you know what I mean no I mean especially when you when you look at it retrospect it <sighs> Aldo built this legacy over what ten years, and Connor put Literally, it all crashing down in thirteen seconds. Literally, uh, oh dude, it's still crazy. And now, and now that Aldo's you know been knocked out from Connor, you know it's Aldo's respect levels just gone completely down from everybody. I'm like, bro, yeah, now this people is Jose just Aldo. through him. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, and it's crazy too because when you do knock out a dominant champion like that, you you notice maybe, and I'm sure that maybe their confidence levels, you know, dropped a little bit from from what happened, you know. But it's crazy that aura that guys get, you know, it, it just it goes away. Remember Anderson yeah. Silva? Anderson Silva was so unbeatable at one point, yeah. and then the second Chris Weidman tagged him. Yeah, a second Chris Wyman tagged him. Now everybody wants to go in there and tag him up. You know, it's it's the that's the mental game. You know what I mean? That's that's one thing I've I've learned too that it it is physical, but man, it, there's a lot of mental game that goes into it. Not just talking shit and and doing all that. You know what I mean? It, it's it's a lot more that goes into it than than the than the eyes sees. You know? No, one hundred percent. It's definitely one of those things where mentally it's probably ninety percent of the battle. You're going yeah. in there fighting 100%. Your yeah, body has to be in tune. But if your mind isn't right, you could be the best, most physical athlete out there. And it's just not going to transition into and a great fight. Honestly, a good example going back, look at Melvin. Melvin's probably one of the most physically gifted fighters that was in the UFC, you know, athletically. He's probably one of the fastest fighters you're going to see in the UFC, you know. And he just couldn't get it together you know and i've heard hella rumors you know about things you know uh mm -hmm. just outside of the gym with him you know so i'm sure he had a lot of things yeah. in his in his personal life going on you know so that's my goal though you know i'm not trying to be in that boat you know i don't, I don't want no outside influences coming in 100 percent. it's always better to look at the guys of our past and kind of learn from their mistakes and go do better yeah 100%. It, it's crazy 100 percent when you look at Melvin, I mean, he was on like this huge hot streak, and then here recently he lost to Gomi, he lost to Izzy right before he walked into his UFC debut. So he's still fighting high level guys. You can tell that there's still a lot of respect carried by his name. Yeah, yeah. And it's funny, uh, uh, him and Izzy, uh, me, me and Izzy are. I don't want to. I don't want to say me and him are like uh we're not besties or anything but me and him we've been friends for about six years now oh, and nice. uh yeah and uh we uh me, me and him got cool before before he started mma well right when he started mma um uh, and uh right when i got this this first thing i went i went and watched his fight uh izzy and melvin because i was like oh shit like you know this is this is wild you know i know he's super busy but have you gotten a chance to pick his mind oh man i've t uh well I've talked to him, you know, plenty over the years, you mm -hmm. know, uh, I've talked to me, me and him, we used to be in regular contact, uh, oh, but nice. one, one, once he got, once he got, uh, yeah, if you go on my Instagram, he, he, uh, he shows me love and stuff on, on a bunch of my posts and stuff, but, uh, um, I, I, I've told him before too, I actually told him a couple months ago, I was like, man, I, I just, I hit him up after one of his fights, you know, and I told him, I was like, Hey, I just want to congratulate you. I just, I don't want to, I try not to blow your phone up. Cause I know there's, I know everybody's blowing his yeah, phone right. up. You know? <laughs> so I just, I, I don't want to be one of those guys who's like, Oh, he made it. And you know, I'm, I'm over here trying to, trying to, you know, I haven't hit him up to go train out there. I'm nothing. You know what I mean? I, I, I'm going to make it, I'm going to make my own route. And then I'm going to be able to be like, Hey, what's up, bro? Like, <laughs> You know, remember years ago, you know, I see you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that that's that's my that's where my mindset's at on that, because there's too many people trying to trying to ride waves and then and, and get be a part of something that they're not, you know, 100 percent. You see that a lot in this game. <clears throat> Unfortunately, in combat sports in general, you see that a lot, especially when you look at something like boxing. You know, there's yeah. so many people at the table trying to make a fight where all we need is one manager and one fighter, one manager and one fighter. But there's like 12 people at the showtime wants to have their name involved and everyone else wants to throw the, just everyone shut up and let's just put the two best fighters against each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and, and it's and it's sad because it, it'll probably never be that simple. Well, the UFC makes it about that simple. Yes. You know, damn but, near. Uh, yeah, but boxing and all the other stuff, yeah, it, it's hell getting getting two top competitors in there. Uh, when do you plan on making your return to a cage? Um, I'm looking at, like, March or April right now. Um, and the only reason is, is, dude, the way I've got my schedule, schedule set up, and look, I only you can see my, my – this is my garage. Oh, nice. I literally have a whole set. I got wall mats in here I just bought uh, uh, literally, like, last – I need to get a better time. garage. <laughs> oh bro yeah I, i've got a whole gym set i got weights in here i got a water bag muay thai bag i got i got it all in here uh but uh 
uh, I've been, I've been set up to train, you know, my schedule is I'm always ready to go, you know, mm-hmm. uh, I'm always ready to go and I'm always training. I, I'm never taken off. Um, it's just this past year, man, I've, I've, I've had so many back to back, um, back to back little things pop up, you know, that I had to take care of. And as I we all have, to, I feel like yeah. it's, that's been the whole slogan for 2020. Literally. literally. Shit's hit the fan. <laughs> yeah, literally. So I'm just, I'm just, I'm just really trying, just getting myself right. You know, I'm going to go in and, and have fun with this, uh, you know, go in there and compete, uh, in, in this tournament coming up. And then, uh, I'm literally going to just get in the gym and just grind and just, just get, get everything back to where it needs to be, you know? Um, and I'm, I'm always trying to learn. So that's nothing I have to truly focus on. Cause I've just got to learn a mindset. I mean, I'm, I'm a black belt and I was asking, uh, uh, I had a session yesterday and I was asking a blue belt to help me with some of the techniques he was, he was, we were working with, you know, so it's just, you know, and you have to have that mindset period. No, 100%. You can't really put a whole lot of ego into this, especially when you look at like the game in the whole wrestlers, like I said earlier, sometimes come in and will smoke, you know, blue belts and stuff like that. Yeah. But, you know, some of those wrestlers have very good takedowns. And if you can't check your ego enough to go over there and be like, Hey bro, how'd you set that up? Or let's yeah. roll through that one more time. Bro, I feel like you, that's just that's how you learn. And bro, you know you want me to tell you? Look, I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. This is how much I'm putting my ego to the side. I haven't been tapped out by a non-black belt since I literally. I, I can't even remember. Honestly, you know, I, I can't remember. Uh, but literally last week, that same blue belt I was telling, and he's a, he's a college wrestler. You know, mm-hmm. blue belt. He, he's a, he's a game game guy. You know, he's not just a regular blue belt, you know, yeah, but, uh, but he caught me. Yeah. But he caught me twice last week, dude. in in a Ooh. session, it was, and it was my first session back, uh, you know, after, after my stuff, but still, you know what I mean? I, I told him, I was like, dude, good, you know, good shit, you know? And then yesterday me and him were working again and, uh, I was just uh, picking his brain a little bit on the stuff he was, he was doing, you know? And, and, but that's why I, I, I really feel that I've got that, the mindset I need to, to, to gain all the skills that I need. Cause I'm not, I'm, I'm okay with learning from, blue belt and i know people who aren't okay with learning from a blue belt you know that's no, why i 100%. say that percent what what belt are you right now are you, what, i'm you a black belt now? you are a black belt yeah, I got what my, uh degrees no i just got my black belt uh three months ago now congratulations yeah appreciate that bro who is your professor jeremy mahon oh and nice, uh nice. uh the 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 tree is henan chavez and then um uh, uh, I'd have to go up it from there. You know, they got the tree on the wall though. But uh, I know Hen and Ch- I don't know if you know who Hen and Chavez is. I do. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. You know who Hen and Chavez is then. So one of my professors, or my my professor, is part of the Dirty Dozen. Uh, one of the first twelve mm, non Brazilians yeah. to get a black belt. Mm. Uh, Rick Lucero. It, it's funny just like picking his brain sometimes. Like he's just like. Like I tell people all the time, like he's forgotten more shit than we'll ever learn. <laughs> nah, and dude, it, and that's dude, that's honestly the jujitsu game. I because I, I, I teach classes and I tell my students that same thing. Literally, you're gonna forget more than you learn, and over the years, those things are just gonna come, come up. Right like back. yeah, you're just one day you're just gonna be training or someone your 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 coach is gonna teach you it again or something, and you're gonna be like, oh shit, like. I this remember is, you know, this is game change. Yeah, you know, it, it's crazy. It'll just come back up, and then you'll you'll use it like you should have used it years ago. You know, exactly. Well, brother, I don't want to take too much more of your time. I know how busy you are, but uh, I did enjoy having this sit down with you. Before I let you go, I want to give you an opportunity to give a shout out to your sponsors, teammates, loved ones, anyone that's really helped you along your uh, MMA journey. Yeah, uh, I want to give a shout out to cap uh complete athlete performance they've been they've been uh helping me out with 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 training and all types of other stuff uh aj's fine bites is them, them my guys right there i don't know if you can see that oh yeah they help me out with my food uh and really man that that's that's really it you know uh of, of course shout out to my team you know but they already know that um really uh, I'm just, I got a big year coming, bro. I, I, the second that I'm, I'm, tr- I'm good and I'm back to where I need to be, I plan on getting really busy this year, you know. And I fought all over, you know, New Jersey, New Mexico, Dallas. Uh, so when I come back, I'm probably going to have some fights in Houston. And then from there, you know, see what happens. Maybe I'll see you out in Vegas here soon. 
Oh yeah, no, you uh, you will trade this year or next for sure. Excellent. At that apex, probably. <laughs> no, for sure. Where can the fans yeah. find you on social media? Uh, you can look me up, Josh Altum, or or uh, actually Super Glue Altum. Yeah, Super Glue Altum is my at name on everything. There you guys have it, Josh Altum. He is part of the combat sports coverage main event going up against UFC vet Melvin Gallard. Thousand dollar cash bracket. Josh, man, super excited for you, and good luck next week. Man, I appreciate you, bro. Seriously. Have a good one. You too, bro.